This is Somewhere in the Skies with Ryan Sprague. Hi, Ryan and Summer in the Skies listeners. Thanks, Ryan, for giving me this opportunity to tell my story. Um, My name's Jamie and I live on the Gold Coast, Australia. Uh, My sighting took place on the 14th of July, 2021 at around 5, 10 p.m. Uh, I just want to preface this by saying um, I've always believed in UFOs and aliens um, and was fascinated by the topic, but... um, I've never looked much into it. So if someone said to me, oh, do you believe in aliens? Um, I'd be like, yeah, for sure. But I, yeah, never really looked much into the topic. I thought that there was only ever saucer-shaped craft. I didn't realize that there was other shapes. And yeah, as a kid, I grew up in a small country town in Australia, somewhat in the outback. So there wasn't much to do apart from you know, go camping um, or, you know, if you're at a sleepover, we'd just be out on the trampoline looking at the stars. Um, So I've looked at the skies most of my life and I've never seen anything uh, apart from your normal satellite going across until this day. So it was a normal work day for me. I work from home um, and I finish at five o'clock. So I was on my way um, after I finished work. I was on my way to the supermarket to pick up some things. As I left my driveway, I was traveling southeast um, and I seen something in the sky and I thought it was a blimp. I was so excited when I seen this blimp because I hadn't seen a blimp since I was six years old and I just wanted to see um, what company was advertising on the blimp. I was thinking like, oh my God, like I haven't seen that for so long. What a cool idea. Um, And in Australia at the time, there was such a hard lockdown, like we couldn't cross states. So I live 10 minutes from the New South Wales border and my family or anyone couldn't cross. So at that time, there was almost no flights into Queensland. It was like, I think to the airport closest to my house, that on one day, there might be like two flights a day or three flights a day or something like it was a hard lockdown. So when I seen something in the sky, it was so exciting. And I was like, yeah, oh my God, it's a blimp. How cool. Um, so I was traveling, um, yeah, Southeast and I'm driving towards a highway. Um, and I'm noticing the blimp in the sky is getting lower. It's not moving in a forward or left to right trajectory. It's just descending from the sky. So I don't actually know how blimps move. I don't even know if that is possible, but that's what I was seeing. So I didn't really think too much of it. As I'm getting closer to the highway, I'm almost directly underneath this blimp now, but I realize it's not a blimp and it's a triangular shape. There's no distinct wings or anything like that. It's, I would say, probably 10 stories up in my mind. I'm thinking it's actually a lot lower than that, but I know that potentially I'm over exaggerating the height in my head thinking, oh my God, it was so close, but it was maybe about 10 stories high and, um, it was quite large. I would say it was the size easy of like a 747 or something like that. Um, so it was this triangular black, craft and it had three lights on each um, point uh, and the lights were round and they were like a bluish white color. I was freaking out. My mind was going a million miles an hour because to me, I'm just thinking like, what is this? This isn't a plane. I work in the tourism industry. I've traveled a lot. I kind of have a rough idea of what planes are and 
kind of what they look like. So I was like, this is not a plane. What is this? And I'm still driving at this stage and this thing's traveling. Well, it's not traveling. It's at a complete standstill above the highway, um, pointing south towards Byron Bay. And at 5.10 in the afternoon, it on this particular highway, it is bumper to bumper. It is packed. Um, so I was thinking, oh my God, everyone's seeing this. Like, what is this thing? I was trying to call. I couldn't get to my phone. Um, I was driving. Like, I didn't have my phone in my hand. But through the Bluetooth of my car, I was trying to call my partner and... Um, I knew that this thing was too low for him to see from our house, but I was still trying to call him, telling him to get outside, get outside and look up like you might be able to see what I'm seeing. Um, So I get over the, this thing also, might I add, no sound. This was the other thing that was freaking me out because I was like, one, I was like, a plane can't fly this low over the highway. It can't. It, this thing isn't making any sound and it's not moving. A plane can't, it would fall out of the sky. It can't just stay there like that. So anyways, I drive, I take my exit 87 and I um, cross over the highway and I look back in my rear view mirror and this thing's gone. Like there was no, it was just completely gone. I didn't see it take off. And then I was thinking like, how did that thing disappear? Like, surely I would have heard a boom or something for it just to shoot off like that. But um, I heard absolutely nothing. So following that, I got to the supermarket and I I tried calling my sister who I knew she's had an experience before. And I was thinking like, if this thing was a UFO, thinking in my head, can, can a UFO be a triangle shape? Um, I wasn't quite sure, but I, I knew that this thing wasn't a plane and I couldn't, I didn't know what it was, but in my head, I was like, I think that was a UFO. So yeah, I tried calling my sister. She didn't answer. So I text her. And, um, then when I got home, I told my partner and for so long, those were the only two people that I ever told because I was thinking no one is going to believe, um, me that I seen the UFO. (laughs) Um, but since then I've been able to share my story with work friends and, um, yeah, some other close friends and everyone actually believed me whether they've seen it, um, seen a UFO or not. They were all just like kind of intrigued with my story. So for months after that, almost every day (laughs) I was searching, um, the news and like Facebook thinking someone would have reported this. Someone would have seen exactly what I seen. It's a busy day over the highway. This thing is so low, but never, I've never heard anyone report it. Um, I've never, yeah, seen anything of it. And yeah, so after that, it kind of sparked my interest in UFOs. And then I seen that through documentaries and different things, there are triangular crafts and listening to Ryan's podcasts recently, the triangles episode, I was like, yes, that's what I saw. I never saw the red light in the middle. Um, the one that I saw, it wasn't illuminated or I just didn't have one. But yeah, it was an absolutely crazy experience. Yeah, so I guess how it's changed my life is that now I fully am involved in the topic. <laughs> like I love listening to the podcast and reading books and watching docos and all those different things. Yeah, so I guess I'll constantly be looking up now to, you know, in the hopes to see the next one. But thank you, Ryan, for letting me share my story. Hi, Ryan, and uh, Somewhere in the Skies podcast listeners. My name is Jeff, and uh, I'm originally from Massachusetts, but I live in Ireland on the East Coast. I've always been interested in UFOs, you know, alien science fiction, you know, uh, since I was a kid. But I never never really um, 
I never saw anything in the sky or anything that couldn't be explained away as, you know, a plane or a helicopter or something that was, you know, easily explained away. <clears throat> that was until um, 2011. Um, we were, it was a summertime and we were walking home in the evening uh, from the playground, just probably around 7 o'clock, I would guess, between 6.30, 7.30. And um, we were walking on the road that you're overlooking the Irish Sea. So you're, we're walking along, and uh, it was myself, my wife, our daughter, who was two at the time, and our neighbors and their kids. And I remember I just looked up at the sky, and I saw this orange ball. And um, it looked like it was emanating from, you could see that there was like a black shape, almost like I'll describe like like the top of a bell, or just some kind of, there was some kind of structure on top of it that it seemed to be emanating from, but it was like an orange ball. And when you were looking at it, it was shimmering as if you were looking at it through heat. You know, like when you're looking down the highway, like long road, and it's hot out, and you could see the heat shimmering off the road. It like was like that, but you're looking at it, and it was shimmering, like I was looking at it through heat. Sorry if I repeat myself. But um, I couldn't tell you what altitude it was. Um, it was high, but it wasn't It wasn't super high. I don't know, maybe, maybe a 1,000 feet? It's, it, it's hard to know. But it was. I just remember seeing it, and just the first time I thought, that's, that's, that's something strange. That's... What is that? And I remember I tapped my friend and I said, look at that, what's that up in the sky? And I remember his rea- I'm noting his reaction was weird. He kind of got freaked out and was like, oh, it's, it's nothing, it's a helicopter. And like turned, I didn't want to look at it, which was, I thought was a weird, weird um, reaction. And uh, the wives were having a conversation and tending to the kids. So they really weren't looking at it. So, uh, But I kept looking at it up in the sky and uh, just thinking, that's, that's that's not something. That's not a helicopter. It's it's. And then all of a sudden, uh, the the as if somebody turned a light switch, it 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 disappeared, like it was just gone. It was there was no trace of it at all. And I just thought that was really weird. It was I've never quite seen anything like that before in my life. So, um, but then I saw it again uh, two days later. I was driving. This time it was the afternoon, evening, sorry, probably around, I'd say maybe 6.30 or something. I was collected my daughter from childcare, daycare, and I was driving back and I was about to turn into our housing estate when uh, I looked above the road again, there was the same thing from a different angle, but the same thing. It was an orange ball, a glowing orange ball of light with like, which looked like it was emanating from the bar- bottom of something, which was like black. Almost like, like, again, like I'd say, like a bell. And um, so I stopped my car and I, I pulled over and I was looking at it. And same thing within, I don't know, it could have been seconds, not very long, as if someone turned a light switch, it just vanished. And there was nothing there. And uh, yeah, it was just, my daughter was only two, so she really doesn't remember it at all. But I just I just was left with the feeling like there's something that that's something more that was something different that I saw in the sky it was something not of this world I I don't know I'd like to think it it was, it was. but like I I am very I'm, I I want to believe but I'm very skeptical about things and but this one was just this one's hard to shake that it was that I saw it twice and it just. And the way it just vanished. Now I've seen, you know, things like, you know, Chinese lanterns in the sky and stuff like that. And I remember it was in Porto and Portugal and they did this whole thing where they lit lanterns like that and put them up in the sky. And this didn't look like any Chinese lantern. This was just like a glowing orange ball. And like I said, and it was shimmering like you were looking at it from through heat. And in, I don't need like a year ago, I remember I was talking to a friend here who was into uh, UFOs as well, but he was telling me that, because I described it to him, and he said, that you, he said, like, oh, the shimmering thing, that sounds like something he had read on Reddit or something where some theory that at a certain time in the day, maybe they have some kind of 
they have a cloaking device and and if a certain time of the day when the light is changing or something like that that they they can't adjust or something like that so like you kind of get a glimpse of them and the shimmering as you're looking through the cloaking device I don't know like I that's just what he said he had read but that was interesting that he said that to me after when I because I just thought it was just that she, that, that it was you know that it was shimmering sorry and um I actually went on YouTube and Googled like UFOs in Ireland and I found one video, which sadly, I don't know where it's gone. It's no longer there, but somebody in a, in a house in the country in Ireland had went out at the, went out their front door and filmed and it was exactly with their phone. And fortunately, this is 2011, so it was not a great footage, but it was definitely the thing I saw in the sky anyway. So the orange, same orange ball looking like emanating from a black structure and um it was hard to see if it was shimmering on the phone but it was without a doubt what i saw and like i said when i saw this thing it wasn't moving through the sky it wasn't flying it was just like there no sound nothing and then just like a light gone so it just like i said i'm left with wanting more i guess you know because i know i saw something that is hard to uh it's hard to explain away it can't be explained away. It was not. There was no sound. It was wasn't anything human. You know, it wasn't anything an aircraft of any kind that I that I know of. So it's just uh, yeah, just left me feeling that there is something more out there. But um, I don't quite know. Don't have any confirmation what it was. But anyway, that's my story. I hope that's good. And uh, thank you for giving me a chance to share it. I appreciate it. And I uh, love the podcast. And uh, thanks. Hey guys, Ryan here. The Somewhere in the Skies podcast is a labor of love every week. And with that comes many different costs to keep the show running. That's where our Patreon campaign comes in. You give what you think the show is worth. There's different rewards available all the time, including shoutouts on the show, early editions of main episodes, bonus episodes and content, and very soon, monthly patron hangouts, where we sit back and chat all things UFOs. So I hope you'll consider becoming a Patreon subscriber today. To learn more and to join, visit patreon.com slash somewhere skies. Thank you for your support and keep looking up. Hey guys, Ryan here, and I've got some exciting news. We've recently partnered with Alien Coffee Bean to bring you the official Somewhere in the Skies coffee. That's right. What better way to listen to the show than with a delicious cup of Somewhere in the Skies? It's a perfect dark roast for those who love an earthly, full-bodied smoothness. These delicious beans come from the island of Sumatra in Indonesia. We've worked very closely with Alien Coffee Bean to make sure this roast was exactly what we wanted it to be. So I hope you enjoy, and I hope you'll pick up a bag of Somewhere in the Skies coffee today. Now available within the United States, with plans to go international in the very near future. Head on over to aliencoffeebean.com and use the promo code SOMEWHERESKIES10 to get 10% off your order. Again, that's aliencoffeebean.com. Remember, keep your feet on the ground, but never stop drinking somewhere in the skies. Hi, Ryan. Uh, thanks for having me on Somewhere in the Skies. My name's Ben, I'm from Ireland. I've had a number of weird encounters and sightings since I was a kid, really, but uh, they all really started back up again since early last year. And I don't really know what to make of any of it, it's all very strange. But I just wanted to start talking about it. So I live uh, at the foot of Montpellier Hill in Dublin, uh, where you can look up the hill and you can see the old uh, Hellfire Club ruin at the top of it. And to my north is the Irish Air Force's base, the uh, Casement Aerodrome. And we're kind of in a, a flight path, essentially. We, we get the, the Irish Air Force's PC-9s flying over. We get all the passenger jets and helicopters and the, the Coast Guard as well. They come over. So my first recent sighting is in April 2021. It's The family's all in the house and we've got a family event on. And I end up volunteered to go to the shop. So I get my, my stuff ready put my headphones in and I start walking and I'm coming through the estate and I'm kind of in the middle of it 
and I look up and there's this plane and I can hear it through my headphones. So I kind of pop the headphones out. And this plane is really low over the estate, like too low for what it should be, really. Um, and it's it's turning. Um, it's not banked, it's just kind of, it's like it's a full yaw trying to turn to its right. Um, so I'm watching, a, watching it come out of the estate, fly over and fly off. I just find it weird. But as I'm watching, I can see the flight path it's deciding to take is going towards this red star off of the distance. This really bright red star. It's quite low down on the horizon. And I just keep watching. I'm walking through the estate, and it's just weird to me. So it's it's just, for reference, the sky is fairly bright. Like, it's not dark yet. It's going to be, but it's, like, this is a bright star for what it is. So I keep watching, and I keep watching this plane fly further and further and further. And comes a little dot. Uh, it's still going towards the star, though. But um, I start uh, the, where I'm walking. The, the houses start getting in my, the way of my view, and I have to go into the shop. So I go in, and I grab my stuff. I come back out. And as I walk out of the shop and get to the estates and get a view again of where it was, I'm looking for that star, and that star is gone. That that red star that was so bright, it's now darker again, and that star should be even brighter. But it's just completely gone. So I'm I'm weirded out by this, and I just start walking home. I'm like, okay, okay no no problem then. Let's just go home. I kind of I get to my driveway and I'm glancing at the mountain. I'm glancing back at the spot where that star was the whole time. And, and when I look at the mountain itself, there's these two white lights over it, and like the, the mountain often does have lights on it. It's not that common, but there's farms and there's roads and there's paths and stuff. People sometimes just be up there with headlights and torches and stuff. But I'm watching these two little lights and they're they're kind of flanking each other side by side and they go up and they just kind of move over and back behind the mountain. And they're, they're high enough up over the trees, like they're not in the tree line anymore. I thought there were lights on the mountain, but they weren't. They were over it. And at the time, I thought it was drones, like two drones flying together, but it just doesn't really make a ton of sense to me when I consider the other things that happen after, um, that, that, including that plane as well. I think that plane's related to stuff after, but um, yeah. So my second encounter is in December, the start of December that year. Um, I'm coming back home. It's really late at night. It's like half 11 or 12. And I'm walking through the estates, and as I'm walking, I kind of look over at the mountain. And over the mountain, there's those two white lights again. And I'm just kind of watching them. Like, oh, there they are again. They've come back over in the same kind of shape and size as before. And as I'm watching, there's more of them. This time, there's like three different objects, distinct objects with these two pairs of white lights, and one of them has a little flashing red light in the middle that kind of flashes at weird intervals. And I'm watching this, and I'm standing in my driveway like, a, like an idiot, just standing in the open, staring at the mountain. And these things are kind of flying up, and they're going around and over the mountain. And like, if I'm to guess, like they're, if they're over the mountain where the, the Hellfire Club itself is, these things are like car size, truck size nearly. Like, they're big enough. So I, like, I doubt they're drones, otherwise they're much closer and they're scanning a really weird part of the mountain. I, I keep watching them, they move off, they move together, they move around, and they're flying up and they're down. And as I'm watching, they all kind of come to the center, over like a kind of a random spot over the forest, and they just kind of slowly drift off. Like they all meet up in the middle and they just kind of pick different directions to go. One of them goes to my right, one goes off to the left. And one kind of decides to go over the back of the man. And I'm watching them, and I just turn around. I just turn around and go into the house. And I'm I'm confused at this still, because like you hear this happen for people where they they're like, oh, I just you know, turned away and I went to sleep for I I, I kind of didn't expect it to happen where you, you I didn't have the wherewithal to catch myself and just stop myself and go, no, I should record this, not turn around. 
but I'm watching these weird lights move off and move together and move away, and I don't even watch where they go. I just go inside, and I. It, it took like a day of me thinking about it for me to go, why did I do that? I had my phone with me. That freaks me out. I've never, I never experienced something like that. My first thought with these was that they're just drones of some sort, maybe mapping them out. But like, it's just the way they move off and meet together and then move off is so weird. Like, it makes no sense for me. Like, why would even on a practical side, why would you want all three of your drone operators if they're all going to different places? They have to land somewhere. What are you going to put each of your guys? like miles away from each other one in the, like a reservoir one in just a random mountain range and one in like a housing estate no it, it doesn't make any sense to me where where they were moving if they were drones because they have to go somewhere they, they have to have an, uh, somewhere where they launched from and it has to be an operator that recovers them and why would you not just put them all on the mountain together so maybe three weeks afterwards um, me and my friends are trying to walk through park nearby us where we're trying to meet, meet up with other friends before Christmas to give each other Christmas gifts and it's kind of late we kind of left it too late and we're walking through and it's pitch black so we're, we're going through the park the park has big street lights and stuff in it so it's not too bad but uh, all this stuff is still in my mind so I'm telling everybody about this the lights that I saw and I'm describing them describing how they moved and I'm describing the middle one the, the one with the middle red light that flashes in a, in a strange pattern and as I'm describing them it's literally above us. And I look up and I point up and I say to them, "It's that's it. That's what I'm describing. And it's exactly the same. It's the, the middle red light that comes on and off in a weird pattern. And the two flanking lights, the white lights. And it, it's moving. And it's moving kind of gently. It's moving side to side and it's moving away. And it's kind of just going over the area. And, and these two white lights look like they're always facing. So it's like they're always directed towards you. They're not like... You're not, you're not losing sight of one light as it turns or something it's just always visible so I'm weirded out by this and I'm pointing up and I'm telling my friends like that's what it was that's exactly what was over the mountain and they're, they're kind of glancing up and they're like yeah yeah it looks like a drone and then they just move on and they, these are people who've had experiences these are people who've seen their own things and have crazy stories to tell and this is like, in front of them and they just lose interest exactly the same way that I did when I was at the door in my house they just, I, they just turned away and started talking amongst themselves. Like we, it actually kind of, it freaks me out. And I, I don't like the odds of me talking about that thing, and then it just spontaneously appearing directly above me. Like that's not, that's that's a hell of a coincidence. And then the very final thing I've seen recently was only maybe a few days before I sent you this this email, Ryan. Was I, I was in my garden and I glance up at my sky. And as I look up, this red streak just tears through the sky. And it only goes a little distance before it just disappears. It's just gone. And I thought it was a meteor. But, like, less than 30 seconds later, two planes, two planes come out of nowhere over the estates, just circling and flying around. And they fly around for maybe two or three minutes before both of them head off north towards uh, the aerodrome. And I have no idea what that was about. So, yeah, those are my sightings. Um... And I really, I don't really know how I feel about any of them, honestly. I'm a little bit freaked out more than I am anything else. Um, it's those white lights that freak me out. Because let alone that they don't seem to be drones. That they fly off in mad directions. I, I've never experienced that feeling of just utterly losing interest in something. Moving on. Especially, especially for it to happen when I described them in the park. For that thing to show straight back up and give my friends the exact same feeling. Nah, that is bizarre to me. I really don't know how to explain it. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate the chance to talk about these things. Uh, cheers. Hey, Ryan. Thanks for this opportunity for me to be able to tell everybody about my possible UAP experience while serving in the Australian military uh, in 2008-9. Um, a bit about my background... I did 15 years in the Australian Defence Force, the first 11 in the Navy as an electronics technician for weapons and radar, and the last four years as a military working dog handler with the military police, because biological is just the same as uh, electronical combat systems, isn't it? 
So anyway, um, I was posted of the latter to work at a remote base in the Australian outback, not far from a town called Catherine in the Northern Territory. And it was around the end of the dry season in September and we were hosting international exercises with the Americans as uh, is widely publicized every single year. And uh, this year was no different. And um, I, it was a weekend, I was on night shift. So uh, I started about sunset and I usually work with uh, one particular colleague who was on, rested on with me that night, uh, a general duties police member and my police dog. And we loaded up the truck, drove down to the flight line. Now in this particular place, the flight line is dispersed in bushland, which means that they don't, the craft don't sit on a nice concrete pad all lined up in a row um, with the spotlights on it. This is dispersed in the dark with around five kilometer radius and um, in between each um, OLAs or uh, ordnance loading areas where they sit in um, is heavy thick bushland and just taxiways okay so imagine that you can see it on google maps if you look it up and to give an idea about this place if any of you visit northern australia um, it's hot wet or hot and dry and this is in the hot and dry season um, and the wildlife is quite thick it's like being on the planet Dagobah and Yoda's about to jump out you and pterodactyls and all that kind of stuff so it's bats, kangaroos, snakes, spiders and stuff you don't even recognise so that's just put picture this so anyway we get out there at about just before sunset and unpack everything and start walking the perimeter and chatting to my colleague because we we're good friends as well outside of work and he started telling me a story about how in September the year before he was patrolling with another handler and um, he had a UFO sighting and with my background and I love astronomy and I'm a science fiction nerd and I'm pretty kooky even though I sound pretty straight laced um, I was like, hell yeah, oh, tell me all about it. And he told me a story about three stars flying overhead, stopping on a dime, and then suddenly dispersing in a split second in all different directions. And that was it. And I'm like, holy shit, right? that's amazing. But where we are and what we're doing right here, that could be anything. Okay, and Catherine is one of the UFO hotspots of the world, especially at that time of the year, right? So anyway, um, we start walking, the sun's starting to set, and we noticed this place usually has a lot of bats, a giant bat colony, and it's full of teeming with life. I mean, everything's alive and everything's got something alive on it. So no kangaroos, you name it, and there was just like nothing. And I put it down to maybe the bats had moved on because they were kind of troublesome and um, at the time interfering with the aircraft. And also we had a recent kangaroo cull, so I thought that the hunters had gone to town and just erased a lot of them off the face of the earth. So that's what I put it down to and I didn't think anything more of it. Anyway, so we're walking on the perimeter, walking along, laughing about this story and my dog suddenly stops dead in his tracks and my dog wasn't the most best police dog in the world he was quite friendly quite soft quite distracted and quite uninterested in being a police dog he was just wanting to be a cat on your lap that was about it so he stops on a dime and he's looking at the horizon up and I'm thinking maybe uh, someone's going to do an exercise with me or something like that. What fun on the weekend when nobody's doing anything because uh, my dog really needs it. And then he starts growling. And my colleague goes, oh, my God, look, oh, my God, there they are. And I looked up and no shit, there were three star-like objects flying towards us in a sort of like a very wide V formation so not a straight line and the, the middle one was slightly forward about the size of the planet Venus on a good day you know when it looks big no flashing lights nothing like that slowly flying in perfect formation and just stopped 
right there. They're about 10 degrees apart, which is like when you look up, you put your hand up, it's about a hand span, and a 45 degree angle line of sight, and they just stop there. And I'm like, mate, 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 is this what you're talking about? And he's like, yeah, yeah, this is it. And he goes, they're gonna just like disappear in a minute. And we're looking and looking and nothing's happening. And they just stop there. And it was like this feeling like, they're looking at us, we're looking at that. And it was like this weird feeling. It was like, we're just all looking at each other right now. And my dog starts barking, which he never does, even when he's supposed to. So I'm like, my God, my dog can see this. And just as I was like thinking, I'm gonna radio my boss and ask if we've got any unscheduled, scheduled, but not really scheduled flying activity going on. And as I was calling him, the outer two objects just in the opposite direction from each other just went like flew away. I've never seen anything like this. I've, I've, I've been in the radars, it's all like world, I've, I've seen all sorts of weird crap, nothing like the Nimitz or anything, but seen some lots of weird crap, seen nothing that flies this fast. And I'm on a base with fighter jets and all sorts of crap, so it's like, no, this is the fastest I've ever seen. But the middle one stayed, the middle object stayed. And we're looking at it, waiting for it to do something, and I spoke to my boss, says, is there any unscheduled, scheduled, but not really scheduled stuff? And he's like, no, leave me alone, get on with your job, bye. And I'm like, well, this is nothing nobody knows that does know that knows nothing about. And it just stayed there, this thing. And my dog's barking, he's going crazy, his hair's sticking up. My dog never does this. And then there was this smell and the Aussie bush smells like wet trees <laughs> and dust that's what it smells like sometimes flowers and animal poop or animal carcasses this was an electrical smell kind of like what people say ozone but to me no not really it was kind of like you opened up an old radar cabinet and all that waft of old people's home and old rusty metal come flying out at you that's what it smelled like asbestos or something and I'm like, where the hell is that smell coming from? There's no wind, um, nothing like that, no animals, no sounds, just this stench, this star in the setting sun sky, my dog growling, and my colleague and I just standing there, and I'm getting jelly legs, you know, because, you know, brave soldier and all that. And uh, just as I said, that stinks like an old radar cabinet then the noise started well it wasn't actually a noise it was more like a vibration that i could only feel in my sinus cavities and my forehead and my lips and kind of a little bit of my chest it was more of a, a feeling rather than a sound an audible hum but i think my dog could pick it up long before we did because he was going nuts he was trying to bite off his uh, lead he was growling his tail was between his legs and I'm like I'm trying to calm him down thinking holy crap and I'm looking around there's nothing out of the ordinary around us at all so we're trying to calm him down and get his toy out and we've got to do this patrol and we're keeping an eye waiting for this thing to do what my colleague said the last year it did nothing but it didn't do it and then it just started getting brighter and then dimmer and then brighter and dimmer again like a beacon really slowly and just sitting there and i'm like i don't know what to, what do you what do you say to this uh phone camera it's 2008 i've got a samsung i think it's a galaxy s2 i wasn't going to capture that and you know i'm trying to control my dog my colleagues telling me it, we were having discussions about Independence Day and, you know, Star Trek, Vulcan greetings. It's also didn't happen. Anyway, we have to do this patrol. We're moving around the perimeter. The sun's below the horizon. This thing is still stationary. In fact, it's geostationary. We figured out because we watched the stars over about an hour or two move as they do. And this thing was still exactly where it stopped. We did a whole perimeter of the flight line and this thing was still exactly where it stopped and it was still now doing a slow bright and dim thing and we're cutting through going around 
Uh, my dog's jumping at every everything and looking over his shoulder and all this stuff. I've got flashlights going. We're all looking with flashlights, nothing. Get, we had a break. It got to about two or three in the morning. Um, we went back to the truck, which was parked in the middle of all this dispersed stuff at one of the OLAs. And I was sitting at the front. I put my dog in the truck because he was just about to lose all his hair at that point. And uh, he quietened down when he was inside. And my colleague and I were laying on the tarmac watching this thing the whole time. And this smell and this humming and coming up with all the reasons what this could possibly be. And I'm racking my brains. I don't know what it is. So I get up. And my colleague went to go and relieve himself in, in the bush. And I'm standing looking into the distance. And in the most heavily dense uh, bush area, uh, one of the corners of, of the area we were patrolling, I could see this glow. It was orange in colour, kind of like a fire. It was flickering like a fire. And scrub fires are not unusual uh, at that time of year, uh, especially in this area. So this, these fires do spontaneously happen because under the base is an underwater river system and cave system and the fires do burn. I, I, I don't ask me about the science of this, but it does, sort of, and they pop up every now and then. So um, I thought maybe it's something like that. And the smell is getting heavier. And I'm like, this must be where the smell's coming from and the humming. So my colleague comes back and I was, he goes, what the hell is that? And I said, it looks like a scrub fire. So we call the fireys and say, we've got a possible scrub fire. Could you please come out? And they say, look, have a look at it first. Tell if it's a big one. If it is, we'll come splash water on it. If not, it will get it will go out itself. All right. So we start walking towards it. I get, I didn't want to take my dog out, but I took, dog, I took the dog out and he was virtually skidding backwards as we were trying to walk forwards towards this light glow of orange. And we got to about 15 minute, meters when my dog was virtually crawling up my back of my pants at that point and growling from between my legs. And it was, this glow would have been about, it looked like a ball of flame, but not, no smoke, no burning smell. And it was kind of a weird looking flame. It was kind of everything was misty in between. Kind of like if someone had a smoke machine and just made this haze of a ball thing, um, about three meters wide, about the same tall, in the middle of a very heavily densely bushed like stretch of area. Um, that's what it would look like. And I was looking at it going, what the hell? And I could see something in it. And I squinted my eyes, and this is where it gets weird. It looked like there was a pair of legs in there. Like, not legs standing in there burning, like legs cut out shape of legs in this light. And there was no body attached to it, there was no feet. All I could see was a pair of skinny little thighs, knees, what I thought were nubbly knees and the top parts are calves and then that's obscured by this orange flamey glowy thing and I'm like we've got an intruder and call the fireys and call the fireys to come out and they saw it they were as they were coming up they could see the light we we're talking about they came rushing out and just as they arrived the light blinks out like someone turned off a switch. And we're still like 15 metres away. Uh, I don't know how many feet that is. Three feet to a metre, you calculate. And the driver said, well, what the hell is that? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Let's have a look. You have a look. So um, they took the truck towards there. We're walking behind the truck very slowly. And they shone spotlights on it. And I dragged my dog by the scruff of his neck virtually and my colleague you get to the corner where this bushland is you can't actually access that place you, um, we're standing at the edge of the taxiway and looking in it would have been about mm, five ten meters in and there was just like this empty patch this oval shaped empty patch of gray ash and sand and there was no vegetation in this where this light was there was no footprints 
there was absolutely nothing but it's heavily bush right so there was trees and stuff hoving overhanging it and they were untouched there was no scorch marks nothing there was no smoke there's no warmth nothing to what i would say is in a bushfire and the fire is like this is weird and and they asked me what the hell is that smell and i'm like yeah can you hear that harman and like the driver said he couldn't but my colleague and I could definitely feel it and I'm pretty certain my dog could and they sprayed some water on it because that solves everything in the firing world so call us if it starts up again and go away and drive back and left myself my colleague and my dog standing there and we legged it we legged it my dog didn't need to even be told where I wanted to go it was like hold on to my dog's lead and he was straight to the truck Meanwhile, this thing is still flashing above us, which I, in the excitement and everything, both my colleague and I had forgotten to mention to the fire, is like, have a look at this shit. Um, they totally didn't, I forgot, you know. We went back to that truck faster than you could say, holy crap. I put my dog in the enclosure at the back, locked it up, and we're just standing there looking at this pulsing, whatever it was above us and looking far in the distance where that orange light was waiting for it to come back or waiting waiting for et to come and you know tap us on the shoulder or something like that nothing the humming was still there the smell was still there my dog was calm as soon as he went inside his little box he was calm by this stage it was about 4 a.m it'd been non-stop all evening like and I was not going to report this. I was not going to because everyone knows I'm a bit kooky and I was the only female in the section at the time and it was hard enough and I just didn't need extra problems. So, and it's 2008, you know. And so um, about 4 a.m. we did a drive-by again. This thing's still in the sky. And then I don't know what made me look up, but I looked up again and it was getting smaller. It was still flashing very slowly, but getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And I'm like to my colleague, it's going, it's leaving. And he's looking up going, it's gonna flash away really quickly and we're waiting for it to do something dramatic. And it didn't, it just slowly raised and disappeared into the sky. And the humming and the smell slowly dissipated over the course of the next hour until five where I had to get back to the section to do a handover and I didn't even know if I wanted to go back to the city I wanted to get the hell out of there but I, I wanted to stick around you know as well I didn't want to leave the place I'm like well, I want to see if something else happens but nothing else happened but at sunrise it's usually when the kangaroos come out again and the bats do their big thing nothing there was still absolutely nothing. There was no birds. There was no bats. There was no kangaroos. Usually the kangaroos are like kamikaze pilots jumping into the car just as you pass them. Nothing. It was to void. And it's only until we got back to the section that started seeing, you know, the usual sunrise wildlife uh, on the base. And I spoke to my section commander uh, at the shift change over the next day who drug got me drug tested pretty quickly and my colleague and told us that it was obviously a scrub fire underground scrub fire probably hit something metal that's what the smell was and the rest of it we we're just making it up and don't you dare write anything like that in any of the reports because you're all liars anyway from that time on I've never ever been able to talk about it really I just talk about it with that same colleague, we're still friends, I live in Germany now and I work with military radar systems once more and um, I still haven't heard or haven't seen anything or any stories, uh, anything remotely similar to what I've seen and experienced and I've, I've, trust me, I'm out there all the time when I can look in and it hasn't, I haven't seen anything like that ever since and um, no many black came to me nobody wanted to know nobody asked me any questions and everybody just thinks it's a great old story and i'm spinning it but i'm telling you that's what i saw i can't explain it 
I sometimes dream about the legs sometimes <laughs> and uh, yeah that's that's how it went and the next time I was out on shift nothing ever happened and trust me I was looking for it and saw nothing heard nothing and my dog just continued on as per normal until I got out so that's my UAP strange story thanks for listening Somewhere in the Skies is produced by Third Kind Productions in association with the Entertainment One Podcast Network.